But it also means, if we were to look up the Greek word grace, we would find that uh, high up there in the list of definitions is the divine influence in the believer's heart. So we are taught by grace, and we're going to look at a scripture on this subject, beginning in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. So again, the title of this message is taught by grace, that divine influence in the believer's heart. Can you say amen? Amen. You know, uh, I think of a meeting that it was my first year as a believer, newly saved, and Shar and I got invited to attend some meetings, and we were told, oh, this, this teacher, he will change your life. They were just talking about what great teaching uh, this man was bringing, and so we had to go, and I kind of had a little check in my spirit about it for some reason I found out after I went to the meetings, but uh, went to the meetings and the man was teaching a doctrine of licentiousness. What that means is looking on grace as a license to sin, which is a false doctrine. And we were sitting there and this man was, he was saying, you know, as Christians, he said, you can't sin. He said, you cannot commit a sin if you're a Christian in God's eyes. And I wonder, well, where is that in the Bible? You know, I just, I, immediately flags began to go up. And then he began to say, uh, of course, this didn't make sense. You can't sin. But he said, and, and then he said, God wants you to actually experience sin in order to, uh, I don't know, he had some reasoning behind that. that he had, and as he was saying that, a scripture, uh, I was a new believer, but I had been reading the Bible. And a scripture out of James just rose up in my heart. And it says that uh, God tempts no one to sin. <laughs> and uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, that, that doesn't line up with the word of God. And this is one of the few meetings I've ever been to. Shar and I got up in the middle of the meeting and just left. I decided I'm, I'm not going to be a part of this meeting anymore because it was teaching a false doctrine of grace He was teaching a doctrine of licentiousness. Another verse that rose up in my heart as the man was teaching was where John the Baptist, in referring to Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. And so, uh, uh, and, and who sets us free from sin. God didn't, Jesus didn't come to set us free to sin. He came to set us free from sin. And so, you know, thank God we have the Word of God that keeps us from falling into false doctrine. But there's a lot of um, wrong slants on the doctrine of grace that are being taught today. And we need to stick strictly to God's Word or we can easily be uh, led astray. It turned out that this man had a very immoral lifestyle and it turned out he was, uh, uh, he was exposed by some pastors in the area and that he was actually committing adultery with some of the women that were coming to the meeting and so forth, and that was what was going on there. When you hear you know, that kind of teaching, it's best to get out of there because God has called His people to holiness, not to a lifestyle of sin. And so he says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness. You know, Paul told uh, Timothy, he said, flee youthful lust, <laughs> you know, <laughs> run. <laughs> uh, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Now we know that our righteousness comes from Jesus, that we can't save ourselves, and that we're saved by grace through faith, but we're saved for a purpose. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved uh, through faith, 
And uh, that not of itself is the gift, uh, not of uh, oneself is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we know we're saved on the basis of the merits of Jesus and what he did on the cross at Calvary. None of us can save ourselves. But we stop reading those verses in Ephesians right there. Many times we ought to read the next verse though. It, the next verse says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so this grace that we receive, this amazing grace that sets us free not to sin, but from our sins, hallelujah, also leads us into good works. And it's all about letting Jesus live through us. Amen. Amen. So, you know, God doesn't tip, tempt any man to sin. He leads us away from sin. Even in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, and then he goes on to say, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. God delivers us from evil. He does not lead us into temptation. And so we need to be solid in the middle of the Word of God. There's so much deception out there today. Grace teaches us to lead a godly life. Amen. To lead a sober life. Grace teaches us to flee worldly lust. And notice verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace teaches us to focus our attention on Jesus. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Uh, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That also speaks of the deity of Jesus, doesn't it? Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So grace teaches us to focus our attention upon the Lord Jesus Christ and to open our hearts to him, to let him live through us. Yes, amen. amen. That's what grace teaches. And it also teaches us uh, to focus our attention on the cross. He talks about redemption in verse 14, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. And yes, believers can sin. I don't believe there's a believer on earth that's been saved very long that hasn't committed some sin, which means to miss the mark. But when we sin, that doesn't mean that we say, well, that must not have been sin, or we have some kind of a, a head in the cloud kind of a perverted grace doctrine that tells us we don't have to repent. That's not in the scriptures. We need to focus our attention on the place of redemption, the works that Jesus did on the cross at Calvary. And when we sin, we go in humility and repentance and ask God for forgiveness. That's what the believer does when he commits a sin, he or she commits a sin. And if we don't do that, we wind up getting deeper and deeper into that sin. And that sin get, gets a greater and greater hold upon our lives. We always need to uh, be taught by grace to turn away from sin and to turn to God. The throne room of God's grace is always open. Hallelujah. And the forgiveness is always there. But we need to know what we're supposed to do when we sin. We repent. We turn away from it. We turn to God in humility and repentance. And we find that forgiveness is always there for us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're committed in this church to properly divide the Word of God. You know what that means? It doesn't mean segmenting it. It means being straightforward with it. That's literally what that means. And the Word of God is not complicated. The gospel of Jesus Christ is very simple. Every person can understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. How He took our place on that cross. He took our judgment on that cross. And by turning to Him in repentance, we can be saved, we can be forgiven. After we're saved, whenever we make a mistake, if we'll turn in humility and repentance, we'll be forgiven and cleansed. Hallelujah. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So he focuses in on that redemption and his purpose for us. We've changed the vision, shortened the vision of the church. We can uh, finally have got it short enough where we can all remember it 
And uh, our vision is finding purpose in life through loving God and loving people. And, you know, if we'll remember that to walk in love, you know, if we love God, we're going to uh, want to walk, we'll let Him live through us. We're going to be like John the Baptist who said, uh, I must decrease and He must increase. And we're going to want it to be Jesus living in us more and more and more. And, and so uh, uh, it's, it's all about uh, surren being surrendered to Him, to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what grace is all about. Grace is all about letting Jesus live through us, focusing our attention on Jesus, amen, and away from the world. Our attention on the world is to get it saved. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, you know, I, I, we have a, a cat named Joy. I've talked about this cat a lot and used the cat in illustrations, but the cat was just living wild out in the neighborhood for a couple of years and had some kittens underneath our deck, and uh, God just touched our heart. We didn't realize that cat that was living under the bushes and that we were shooing out of the yard for a couple of years was going to become a dear member of our family. And, uh, but, you know, God had a plan. We'd always been dog people, never been cat people. And so uh, we adopted this cat. This cat adopted us, and we loved uh, our cat, Joy. But she started, you know, coming inside, and we have a little different places. She's a free cat. She come in when she wants to. She goes out when she wants to. And uh, just wonderful pet. She's the cleanest little animal I've ever She just keeps herself spotless. We don't even have a litter box in the house. She goes to the back door when she wants to go out. It's never messed in the house. Wonderful pet. She loves us. She just uh, loves to have her tummy scratched and to be petted. She just purrs away. But one time, she, we got her a little mat because the cats we found don't like to be cold. So we got her a little heating mat where when she lays on it, the weight of her pressure on it causes it to heat up. And so uh, that's one place where she'll rest sometimes. And she was in the house on that heating mat, just asleep. And this, she hadn't been with us very long when this happened. And Char walked by her and woke her up and kind of startled her just and she forgot for a moment, I guess, where she was, and she screeched at Char. Didn't scratch her or anything, but screeched at her. And then uh, she was so embarrassed, Joy, our cat, was. Char, you know, went over and sat down, and she went over. She was just in humility and so embarrassed that she had screeched at Char and went over and rubbed herself on Char's feet and licked Char's hand and everything like saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to screech at you. And I looked at that and I said, you know, if we as believers could ha have that kind of attitude when we miss the mark or make a mistake, you know, that kind of humility and love for God, and love for Jesus, that when we uh, commit a sin, when we uh, make a mistake, that we would, oh, be, feel so sorry and we would just uh, go to God, say, oh, God, I'm so sorry, you know, and, and ask forgiveness. You know, that, that was just a beautiful picture of what repentance should look like. We should never run away from God with our sins. Grace teaches us to run toward God with our sins because that's the only place we can be forgiven. That's the only way we can be set free is through the blood of Jesus Christ and through His forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus, this Christian walk. You know, it's all about letting Him live through us. The Holy Spirit is there to help us walk in the footsteps of Jesus. This is uh, Pentecost uh, Sunday. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. I'm going to come back to this chapter, but looking ahead into that next chapter, uh, ver chapter 3, it says in verse 4, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of of the Holy Spirit whom He poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. This, this really speaks of uh, how the Holy Spirit helps us in our Christian walk. And it mentions three workings of the Holy Spirit in these verses. Uh, we're regenerated by the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, it's the Holy Spirit that regenerates us. We, we speak of that as the new birth. We're born again. Why? Because the Holy Spirit regenerates us. But then it says, 
renew, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. He also, it doesn't end with the new birth, it begins with the new birth. And we're renewed by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? And then, then he says that was poured out on us abundantly. We can always ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ought to want to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Going back to verse 15, speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. It's all about living for Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself. He speaks about Jesus. He, te he, he, spe he tells us about Jesus. Speak, speaks to us. Uh, Jesus speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, one of my favorite westerns, I, I love the old Gary Cooper westerns. How many of you know who Gary Cooper is? He was a famous uh, actor, was in a lot of great westerns. Some of the real classics, like uh, High Noon was a real western classic. If you haven't seen that movie, I highly recommend it. Uh, the, oh, if you haven't seen Sergeant York, this is, uh, you're talking about one of the best movies ever made with Sergeant York. Say, so who is Sergeant York? Well, Sergeant York was the most decorated American soldier in World War I, and Gary Cooper played his life story. You're talking about a great movie. You ought to get that movie, find it somewhere, if, it on, if it's not on Netflix or wherever, you know. You, but it's wonderful. And uh, one of my other f favorite movies that uh, Gary Cooper made was uh, uh, entitled The Hanging Tree. How many of you have ever seen The Hanging Tree? I see two people. I'm sure I've seen it with me, and Chris has seen it. Well... If you ever get a chance, watch The Hanging Tree. But in The Hanging Tree, Gary Cooper plays the part of a doctor in the Old West. And of course, he wears a gun. He's a gunslinging doctor in, in the Old West. And this young man gets shot, and Gary Cooper saves his life, you know, removes the bullet and saves the young man's life. And uh, the young man, after he saves his life, he said, he said, you, you know, you've saved my life. Uh, what can I do for you? And uh, he said, I could never pay you back. <laughs> and, and Gary Cooper, the doctor, told him, said, well, he says, I need an assistant. You can help me. You can be my assistant, and I'll teach you what to do. And the young man said, well, uh, sure, I'd be glad to do that. How long now, how long will I need to be your assistant? And Gary Cooper, uh, the doctor, thought about it, and he said, well, uh, uh, he says, when I saved your life, uh, how long did I uh, save you from death? And he said, well, uh, I guess you, for the rest of my life you saved me from death. And he said, well, then I want you to be my assistant for the rest of your life. <laughs> and, and really that's the way it is with Jesus. When we came to him, he saved us and gave us eternal life, didn't he? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How many of you made an an irrevocable, eternal decision when you accepted Jesus. I hope everybody in here did. It was an eternal decision, now and forever decision. And he, he, he saved us, didn't he? We were born again. We knew we were forgiven. We were cleansed. Had a new beginning, a new life. Was that for a day? Was it for just a week? He gave us eternal life, didn't he? Amen. And so we have the honor and privilege of serving Him throughout all eternity. Yes. Can somebody get excited about yes. this? Yes. Amen. How long did He save us from eternal damnation? For eternity. How long should we serve Him? For all eternity. Amen. Somebody get happy in here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Grace teaches us to want to serve the Lord to want to obey Him. We, we want to. And if a person says they're born again and they don't want to follow Jesus and, and they, they don't want to walk in His footsteps, the Bible says you know a tree by its fruit. And I would question, I, I would say it's time to reassess if you feel that way. Because a believer should want to serve the Lord. I remember when I got saved, I said, Lord, this is so wonderful. I knew I was free saved, I had purpose in life. And I said, Lord, this is wonderful. What can I do for you? I've shared it many times. I'll never forget what the Lord said to me. He said, just go out and love others with the same love that I've shown you. 
And that's what uh, I've been trying to do for over 30 years now is to let his love flow through me. Paul said, love fulfills the law. He said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. He said, greater love is this than, has, uh, is, uh, greater love is this than, has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Amen. And so that work that he did by going to the cross at Calvary, he went there willingly. It was planned by God that he die on the cross. It was prophesied. In uh, the, the cross itself, he talked about his, his hands and feet being pierced in Psalm 22. Uh, it was prophesied specifically that he would die by being nailed to the cross. Uh, the, the works that he did at Calvary, given his life, are also specified with, in great detail in Isaiah 53, uh, 800, eight, 900 years before he was actually crucified at Calvary. He went there because of his love for us. It was love that held him on that cross. Amen. Glory to God for our sins. And so uh, we, we ought to want to follow him, to walk in his footsteps, to obey him, to call him Lord, not just Savior, but Lord. That's what grace teaches us. Amen. I think to talk about the difference between, you know, we know we can't be saved uh, by keeping the law. It's only on the basis of the merits of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. But if we're saved, we'll find ourselves being able to do, because He's living in us, being able to uh, keep God's moral precepts when we weren't able to before, even when we tried. It's because of His power working through us. Amen. It's because of His grace teaches us, empowers us. Love fulfills the law. It's like, have you ever seen someone walking a dog where they're just not, don't, they're trying to train that dog through force and being mean to the dog and they have usually a thick lease on the dog and they're snatching the dog around. The dog's snatching against them and it's just tug and t like a tug of war, uh, that kind of trying to train a dog, you know, and, and the, the, the dog is afraid of its master and doesn't like its master, and there's all kind of tension going on there. But then have you seen a person who's trained a dog in love and kindness, walking a dog without even a leash, and that dog just follows along Follows the master along. When the, when the master stops, the dog stops. Looks up at... I've, I've seen their dogs trained that well. You, you watch some of the, the dog shows on TV. They train them by feeding them, giving them little things, being kind to them, loving them, you know. They got all this little stuff in their hands. You know, they slip to them. And that those dogs love the, the people that train them. And they just rot with them, you know. And they've just got their attention on the master, on the dog trainer because they respect and love that trainer. That trainer provides food and nourishment for them. And so they gladly go about their business. They, the dogs really enjoy it. You can tell they enjoy it. Well, that's what grace teaches us to enjoy being believers. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We want to serve the Lord. We love the Lord. And His love empowers us. Amen. Glory to God. That's what grace teaches us. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Well, I think I finally preached myself happy this morning. So, so uh, I believe we got the point. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you're watching by internet, I believe you got the point. We believe in presenting the Word of God straightforward to you. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the Word of God that does not return void. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one of these, Lord, uh, that are here this morning, those that are watching by internet. I ask your blessing upon them. Lord, I thank you that grace is teaching us every day. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be more like Jesus today than we were yesterday. We want to be more like Jesus tomorrow than we are today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
praise God. And with everyone with your head still bowed, eyes closed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God, I'd like to ask you just to look into your hearts, those watching by internet as well, and ask yourself this question. Have I really been born again? Have I really invited Jesus into my heart? Have I, have I given him dominion in my life? I, have I accepted the gospel truth that he took my place on that cross? Jesus loves each and every person within the hearing of my voice. He loves every person on this earth. We just said that salvation has appeared to all men. Salvation is available to every man and woman on earth, but he does require us to make a decision, to make a choice, to choose him. That's the part that he requires us to do. And sadly, people die every day without having chosen Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We don't want that to happen to anyone with, in this church or watching, those watching by internet. Never postpone that choice. God's not limited by your weaknesses. He's limited by your decisions. Hallelujah. He's knocking on your heart, wanting to come in. All you have to do is turn to him and open the door of your heart and accept him as Lord and Savior. If you'll say this prayer, a now and forever prayer, then you'll be saved, you'll be born again. He'll change your life and he'll begin to transform you into the image of his son Jesus. You're saying, that's what I want. I want to open the door of my heart to Jesus Christ. I want to invite him in. I want to accept him as personal Lord and Savior. I want you to lift your hand up high wherever you are, whether you're in this church, whether you're watching by internet. Also, if you want to come back to Jesus, maybe there's something you just need to take to the cross of Christ. We're going to include that in this prayer as well. Just lift your hand up high. God sees your hand wherever you're watching from on the internet as well. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let's say this prayer together. You know, it's uh, in Romans chapter 10, Paul wrote that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the, a heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And a few verses down, the Bible says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're going to uh, confess with our mouths and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by saying a prayer. I said a prayer like this a little over 30 years ago. It took about a minute to say it, but it changed my life forever because I said it with sincerity of heart. And if you'll say this with sincerity of heart, you'll be saved, you'll be born again. He'll change your life. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent. For all my sins, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I invite you now and forever to be my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. And uh, for those watching by internet, we have seven free books available to you. Uh, you can click on that free books button and receive instructions on how to get them. Also, if you said that prayer, uh, we encourage you to uh, click on the praise report button and let us hear from you. We just want to pray over your life and we want to rejoice with the angels in heaven of what God is doing in your life. We thank God for you. Uh, we want to invite those that need prayer. If you need prayer for any reason, uh, just come on up to the front of the church. I've got Shar here with me. So, man, we're... We're, uh, I love pray for people when Shar is with me. I love pray for people all the time, but especially when, when she's able to get out of the children's church for a while. <laughs> so if you need prayer, come on up and we're going to pray for you. The rest of you, just stretch out your hands toward those that are being prayed for and let's believe God together to meet every need.
uh, with your family and uh, with the Lord's approval and blessing. Amen. God bless you. Win the world for Jesus.